We're here today, uh, February the 13th, at approximately 2.05 p.m. for the videotape deposition of uh, Honorable K. Michael Moore. And case number 94-0791-TPJDAR, District of Columbia. Uh, plaintiff is Matthew F. Fogg versus Janet Reno. Uh, videographer is Bruce Palejo of Accurate Video Service. And the uh, reporter is Christine Vergona from Jack Bester. Will counsel the announce their appearances for the record? My name is Alexander Shuebe of the United States Attorney's Office representing the U.S. Marshal Service. And my name is Frank J. Costello representing the plaintiff, Matthew Fogg. Swear the witness. Swear the testimony that to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Could you state your name, please? Uh, Kevin Michael Moore. And what is your occupation? I'm a U.S. District Court judge for the Southern District of Florida. Uh, your Honor, uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions uh, dealing with the case filed by Mr. Matthew Fogg. Um, before we start the questions, though, if you could, could you give me a uh, description of your background, uh, let's say starting from the time that you uh, graduated from college? And I may interject some questions okay. as you're going along. Uh, I graduated from Florida State University in 1972. Um, I worked for approximately a year at the New York Stock Exchange uh, in 1973. Uh, I began attending Fordham Law School in New York City, uh, graduated in 1976, started as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Southern District of Florida, uh, stayed there in that office until 1981. Uh, I moved to Tallahassee, Florida as an assistant U.S. attorney. <coughs> and uh, I was in that office until 1989 and I held various positions uh, during that time as either a line assistant, a supervisory assistant, uh, a chief assistant, court appointed U.S. attorney on two occasions, and uh, presidentially appointed U.S. attorney uh, in, I believe, 1987. Stayed there in that position until 1989. In 1989, I was uh, uh, appointed in, I think, approximately November. Uh, as director of the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, Can I interject for a second, Your Honor? When you say you were appointed, who appointed you uh, director of the U.S. Marshal uh, Service? President Bush. Uh, it was the first time that position had become a uh, presidential appointment. And I stayed in that position until February of 1992, at which time I was uh, appointed by President Bush to be a district court judge. And I've stayed in that position since. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm going to be asking you some questions um, dealing with the period of time that you were in the U.S. Marshal Service, um, 1989 to 1992, uh, rather, when you were director of the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, during your period as director, um, did you uh, serve the function or occupy the position of a selecting official of any type? Yes. Um, what, what does that term mean, selecting official? I, I was the final uh, decision maker when it came to personnel selections at at, uh, at a certain level and above. Do you recall what level and above you were the selecting official? No. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'm going to show you a document that I'd like uh, to be marked as Defendant's Exhibit Number 1. Okay. Do you recognize that document, Your Honor? Hey, I recognize the form of the document. I don't uh, have a specific recollection of this particular document. Um, it, it's, it, for the heading of it states that it is from uh, K.M. Moore Director. Is it fair to say that uh, as the United States Marshal Service, um, of the United States Marshal Service, is it fair to say that this is a document that um, could have been generated by you or was Well, it wasn't generated by me, but it was issued on my behalf. What is the document, sir? 
Uh, this is the merit promotion announcement, or a merit promotion announce announcement. And uh, from, from reference to the document, can you tell what it's a merit promotion announcement for, for what position? It says it's for the criminal investigator position in uh, the enforcement division and headquarters. Okay. Uh, underneath that, there are some numbers, GS 1811-12 and then GM 13, two positions. What right. does that refer to? Uh, GS 1811, as I recall, is the, uh, I believe that's a, a, a designation for a law enforcement officer, and uh, the 12 and the 13, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, are the grades. Okay. Um, is this an example of the type of position that you would have been the selecting official for during your period as director of the Marshal Service? I believe so. Um, I'd like to move to admit uh, exhibit number one into evidence. No objection. Your Honor, um, when making the selection, um, the ultimate selection, uh, was there was there any st were there any steps that were taken prior to the ultimate selection? Could you tell me basically what the procedure was in the selection procedure before it got to you making the ultimate selection? Uh, well, when when there was a vacancy, um, typically it would be brought to my attention that that there was a vacancy, that there was going to be uh, an announcement. Um, you know, at some point before the selection, uh, I would try to informally talk with the senior uh, personnel in the marshal service, either the uh, 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 individual in charge of human resources, which at the time was uh, Ken Aleko, uh, perhaps talk to uh, the deputy director or deputy directors, depending on uh, the time period that was involved. I may talk to the uh, 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 head of the uh, a directorate, either the operations or administration side of the house, um, and just try to get some sense of <coughs> who the individuals were, um, what their thoughts were, and I would try to do that one-on-one uh, -on -one with them. Uh, sometimes they may come to me on their own and want to discuss it. Uh, and then also, before the final selection was made, uh, uh, typically we didn't do one at a time. I mean, there would be a, a personnel meeting where we would uh, have a roundtable discussion and uh, recommendations would be made, and, uh, and then I would be the final decision maker on it. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to show you two more documents I'd like to be marked as uh, exhibit, deposition exhibit number two and three. Do you recognize either exhibits number two or three, Your Honor? Again, I, I recognize the form. I certainly recognize my signature on defendant's exhibit number three. Um, and I have seen uh, forms uh, similar to number two, although, as I said, I, I can't recall. This is, what is this? This is eight years ago. I don't have a specific recollection of, uh, of these particular forms, but I am familiar with the, the general nature of these forms. Could you identify for me what deposition exhibit number two is from what you can tell? It says it's a merit promotion score report. And, and what is a merit promotion score report? Uh, it lists the uh, it lists the names of the individuals uh, who I assume have applied. Um, it gives uh, different, uh, as you go across the report, uh, uh, laterally it lists uh, different components that the candidate is scored in, and then it gives a total score. Your Honor, what is deposition exhibit number three? 
Uh, this is the, I believe this was, well, this says it's the United States Marshal Service Merit Promotion Certificate. When I made a selection, uh, I would indicate that uh, it looks like I put an S next to the name of the selected individual, S for selected, and then sign it. Are, are these uh, the types of documents that you would review prior to making your uh, selection determination in a case like uh, the one we have here? Well, I, I definitely would look at uh, number three. I may or may not look at uh, number two. And, Your Honor, where do, who generates these documents? Where do these come from prior to getting to you? If they came to me, they would come to me from uh, Ken Aleko in the uh, Human Resources. Okay. Uh, is it fair to say there is some type of pre-selection uh, uh, or recommendation uh, procedure before um, th these documents get to you? Th that there are some... Some type of procedure in which uh, uh, individuals are listed and, um, and recommended or, or there's some type of cutoff list made prior to, uh, to coming to you to make the ultimate selection. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure that, I mean, it had to go on. They had to eliminate some people who were not uh, as well qualified as the individuals on the list. Okay. Um, let me ask you this, Your Honor. On either uh, exhibits number two or three, is there any indication whatsoever on those documents of the race of the individual applicants? No. Okay. Deposition exhibit number two, uh, you stated, is ranked in terms of some type of score. Right. Um, and and it is, does it appear to be that the highest score is at the top and goes down to descending order? Yes. Okay. Um, in your capacity as selecting official, uh, were you under some obligation or was there a protocol for you to pick the top people on the list? No. Um, how did that work? What, what, what exactly were you supposed to uh, take into consideration in making your ultimate decision? Or was there any gui were there any guidelines? Well, I don't think there were any specific guidelines that I'm aware of as long as they were on the list. I mean, that was the only ultimate uh, criteria. They, they could not be selected unless they were on the list. If they were on the list, they were al otherwise eligible for selection. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a, another exhibit that we're going to mark. Uh, <coughs> exhibit four. Do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. And uh, could you uh, tell us what that is? Well, after I would have made the uh, selection pursuant to exhibit uh, number three, then personnel would prepare the announcement of it, uh, indicating the individuals who uh, were selected uh, for distribution throughout the Marshal Service. And that is what's contained on uh, Exhibit 4, and that's, those are my initials on the document. Could you tell me who the selections were um, as represented by Exhibit number 4? Uh, Thomas Arp and James Confer. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'm going to make reference back to uh, Deposition Exhibit number 2, which appears to be the, the Merit Promotion Score Report. Okay. Um, on that report, uh, uh, it appears that Mr. Confer is number 1, uh, right. However, it appears that Mr. Earp's name is listed at number 15. Okay. Um, Your Honor, um, in addition, um, it appears that Mr. Fogg, the plaintiff in this case, is ranked as number three. Right. Okay. Um, could, could you explain to the jury, please, uh, how did you come about making the selection of uh, Mr. Confer and Mr. Uh, Arp? instead of, say, Mr. Fogg? Well, this, it looks to me that, that this decision was made in May of, the latter part of May of 1990, which means I would have been on the job about six months at that time. Um, I came from Tallahassee, Florida, and as an assistant U.S. attorney and as a U.S. attorney, uh, I had had dealings with the Marshal Service, um, so I knew of uh, Mike Art from uh, 
from Tallahassee and